Now, in this next session, Kristalina Georgieva, who is the Managing Director at the International Monetary Fund, will give us a global perspective on how payments will look and continue to evolve in the digital age. So let's cross to Kristalina to hear opinions on how payments are to evolve. Thank you very much, Manisha. Never too late to join the International Monetary Fund. I just did it last year. Uh, I want to thank also the Monetary Authority of Singapore for the invitation. It is a great honor to join policymakers and entrepreneurs from around the world. 2020 has been an extremely difficult year. The pandemic has caused immense suffering too much of the economic toll has been borne by the most vulnerable people in wealthier and in poorer countries alike. But there are some bright spots, heroic nurses and doctors saving lives, essential workers keeping the lights on, water running, stores shelf full. And there are many others who kept businesses going, like the people of the technology industry. You have profoundly changed our way of working, interacting, and living our daily lives. You have brought the digital future to our fingertips and to our doorsteps. So let me capture a vision of that future and the four cornerstones needed to build it. Now, picture a furniture maker, a skilled artisan, working in a factory in Thailand. Recession hits, she loses her job. Then with unemployment benefits sent to her phone, she starts her own workshop and sells locally. The artisan makes and receives mobile payments. She chooses to share her payment data, allowing her to get an online loan to hire people and to grow her business. One day, she gets a message asking if she ships abroad. You no longer have to be big to be global. A digital platform processes her payments from abroad at a low cost, and it provides insurance, savings, and investment options for her deposits, making her livelihood more resilient. None of this would have been possible even 10 years ago. This is a story about human drive and ingenuity, a story about the revolution in payments that erases physical distance, that generates data, which is the new gold, and hence often the new collateral. It is about payments that are cheap and widely accessible, that are seamlessly integrated in our digital lives. And as the way we make payments changes, our world changes. We can provide access to financial services for 1.7 billion adults who are still unbanked and help many more vulnerable people who are currently paying high fees. Also, the banking and financial industry is being reshaped by data automation and real-time analytics. And finally, payment innovations can change the international monetary system, the ways in which we transact across borders, access foreign assets, exchange currencies, and price goods. And digital payments are not just for the tech savvy. They have huge implications for the whole world. So we must tread courageously and carefully. We must ensure that payments evolve to meet user needs while remaining safe and resilient. And that's at the micro level. At the macro level, we need to foster a financial sector and international monetary system that are efficient and trusted, equitable and inclusive, and still dynamic. The artisan's digital future will rest on four cornerstones, private sector innovation, public sector involvement, regulatory and legal frameworks, and international cooperation. So let's look at each of these four pillars. 
Private sector innovation has served many people well. Think of the bank accounts in which we save, the cards we use to pay, or the model, mobile money of our artisan. Uh, many people still use cash, but the numbers can decrease rapidly. Uh, take Sweden, where only 10% of the adult population still uses cash, down from 40% a decade ago. In the same period, mobile money accounts in Kenya increased exponentially from 12 million to 61 million, more than the country's population. The private sector is best able to gauge the needs of people and businesses, provide the diversity of products and services they want, and take the risks necessary for innovation. But we must ensure these risks do not translate into risks to end users of the financial system. And we must avoid other pitfalls, such as mon monopoly power or underserving vulnerable people. And for that, to avoid these risks, we need the other three cornerstones. Next one, public sector involvement to provide verifiable digital ID, communications infrastructure, central bank money, and other necessities. It is digital ID that allows our artisan to enroll in new financial services. It is one precondition to financial inclusion. The other, internet access. Our story only works if the artisan is online. And nearly half of the world's people are not, including 75% of the population in sub-Saharan Africa. The picture is reversed in North America, where around 75% are connected. The IMF strongly encourages investment in infrastructure now as part of the post-COVID recovery effort. A synchronized public investment push is best. If countries act together, they can achieve two thirds more at the same cost than if each country acts alone. And they can draw in critical private investment as well. And of course, central bank money, traditionally notes, coins, reserves, remains essential. The ability of our Thai artisan to convert the digital money she receives into local currency on demand is a key matrix of stability. Central currency also helps her accept payments in mob mobile money issued by different providers, just like a common language. Central bank money allows one provider to pay another. With this foundation, each fintech company can offer and evolve its own services. Interoperability gives wings to innovation and diversity in payments. How could central bank money evolve in the digital age? As new payment providers emerge, will they too have access to central bank money? Will a digital version of notes and coins be introduced? Many countries are considering just that possibility. While the form of central bank money may change, its function should not. It should still anchor the stability of other forms of money while enabling their evolution and diversity. Let me go to the third cornerstone. It is equally important. Robust regulatory and legal frameworks should allow innovation and startups to flourish while achieving essential goals, protection and privacy for consumers, countering money laundering and other crimes, and providing stability and resilience for all. Regulatory clarity is essential and particularly challenging as technology and products evolve rapidly. Starting a business is not difficult because there are multiple forms to fill out. It is difficult if we don't know how many more 
they will be to fill. Next, new entrants will ask, what rules am I subject to? Will my product be considered a deposit, a security, a payment system, or something else? In the tradition of Lee Kuan Yew, Singapore's government continues to innovate. Its new payments law is promising. It seeks to define digital payment instruments and to adopt an activity and risk-based approach to regulating payments. Done right, that levels the playing field for new entrants. Same activity, same risks, same rules. But evaluating these risks raises new questions. For instance, our artisan offered payments data in place of collateral. But are loans based on more accurate data and analytics less risky? Should she pay less? Lawmakers and regulators should be given the resources to succeed and stay ahead of the curve. Answer these questions. They will need to be far-sighted and collaborative given the wide ramifications of new payments. Central banks and finance ministries working with antitrust agencies, privacy groups, data protection agencies, law enforcement, civil society and consumer advocates, just to name a few. And just as money crosses borders, so too must our regulatory efforts. This brings me to the final cornerstone, international cooperation, including to facilitate international payments and manage spillover effects. Will our artisan be able to send money across borders as easily as we send text messages? Or will she have to pay 7% average fees as do today's 800 million people who depend on remittances? But sending money is more involved than sending texts. It will require technology standards between digital monies, mutual regulatory and legal treatments, and ID systems that are trusted across borders. Uh, the Financial Stability Board, with our support, recently offered a roadmap to enhance cross-border payments. But much work lies ahead to implement it. Uh, cooperation is also key to address spillovers. As digital money becomes more widespread, effects will ripple around the world. These include domestic currencies being swapped for more enticing foreign currencies, reduce monetary policy effectiveness, and circumvention of capital account restrictions. Spillovers can be even more far-reaching. Under some conditions, new digital money can affect the international monetary system. The nations of the world created the IMF to help them guide the international monetary system and make it an engine of growth for everyone. At a time when the risks of further divergence between rich and poor has increased, we recognize that responsibility has never been greater. Today, we stand ready to help foster a more resilient monetary system, one that is more inclusive, smarter, and greener. Nobel Peace Laureate and former Liberian President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf once said, if your dreams do not scare you, they're not big enough. Global companies, startup entrepreneurs, and our artisan are dreaming big. We need to make the payments revolution work for all. Thank you. Kristalina Georgieva. I cannot thank you enough on behalf of the whole team here at the Singapore FinTech Festival for that wonderful address and for such clarity on how we've all benefited, but in particular, those whom the IMF helps so much uh, from these digital and efficient payment systems. Thank you so much. And for all of our audience, we hope that you now have a clearer idea of how far payments have progressed and how they'll continue to change and improve in the digital age.